Hi friends, I'm Misha Janice. Thanks for coming back to my channel. I just wanted to show you uh, some current goings on in one of the cases that we're that we've been covering um, and I haven't touched on in a little while, but there are some big things happening down in Miami with the Courtney Clinney case. Now, a little bit of a refresher. If you'll recall, Courtney Clenny was the OnlyFans model, and I use that term loosely, but that's what she calls herself. So that's what I will refer to her as. She is the court, she is the OnlyFans model who was in a relationship with Christian Obum Selly. And in 2022, she and Christian got into an altercation at their home in downtown Miami, and she ended up stabbing Christian, um, which led to his unfortunate demise. Now, she originally was not arrested for any sort of assault or um, homicide of Christian, um, but after a lot of pressure from the family of the victim, <clears throat> the state attorney's office did go ahead and um, and press charges against her. So she is currently um, awaiting trial for homicide, and that's where she is to this day. Now, there are three cases that came out of this one incident. There's the case against her for homicide. There is a civil action brought by the estate of Christian Ovenselli against her uh, as well as the building that they were in. Their relationship was, it was toxic. It was a mess. They had a tumultuous relationship and the building that they were living in, and they were only living there for what, three months or so? The building knew it because they caused a lot of disturbances in the building amongst the neighbors. They caused disturbances down in the lobby. They caused disturbances in the elevators. We've seen the videos um, of some of their arguments that they've had. We know that the police were called on multiple occasions because of this couple's fighting and just all around noxious behavior. So the estate of Christian Ovenselli has sued um, the building where they were living, as well as the management of the building, the security guard company uh, that was providing security in the building, basically on the premise of you guys should have known that something was going to go down because of this past behavior. And there definitely was a pattern of past behavior. So we'll look at that really quickly today. But what I wanted to tell you about was this third lawsuit that was um, initiated arising out of uh, this series of events. And that lawsuit was brought by the state of Florida against Courtney, as well as her parents. This was for unlawful accessing of uh, a digital device, basically. The facts were that there was a laptop that the state of Florida said was owned by Christian Obumselli. It was left in the apartment where they were living. Um, so it was not secured as, it was not seized as a piece of the evidence in the case against Courtney. Um, and months later, all of a sudden, the state is made aware that um, the defense and the defense counsel, as well as Courtney's parents, are accessing or attempting to access this laptop. So that was the, I don't know, that was the most current um set of arguments really going on is this hacking case. So I just want to share with you some of the recent events and then what happened most recently within this case. Let me share my screen. So this article is from the end of June, which was approximately two weeks ago. Florida judge on Wednesday excluded key evidence in the so-called computer hacking case involving Courtney Clenny and her parents 
ruling that the prosecutors violated attorney-client privilege by accessing private conversations between the Clennies and their attorneys. Now, these private conversations were a WhatsApp uh, group chat, basically, um, between Courtney Clenny's parents and Courtney Clenny's attorneys. And in this chat, because we have seen it, they're discussing how to get into this laptop. And they're discussing possible different passwords that could open the laptop. Um, at one point, they, they figure out what the password is. And the father of Courtney Clenny actually gets into the laptop, at which point the attorneys are like, okay, you know, hold off from doing anything else. We don't want this to go any further. So now that you've got in, just, just preserve it. Like, don't go in, don't go looking through anything. Um, so this is the problem here. So. Investigators came across the group text during the investigation of Obamselli's death, resulting in prosecutors charging Clenny and her parents with unauthorized access to a computer. Clenny and her parents, Kim and Deborah Clenny, Kim is the father, Deborah is the mother, are accused of trying to access Obamselli's laptop after Clenny's arrest with her help from the jail. With the ruling, the judge, Judge Laura Sharon Cruz, granted the Clenny family's request to suppress evidence of those communications, which formed a large part of the state's case. Cruz's two-page order did not address a related motion to dismiss the charges altogether, but she is expected to do so in a more detailed ruling. And that is what we are going to jump over to now. Because although I don't have a more detailed ruling, there was a hearing that was held in this case. Um, I believe it was yesterday, the 11th. It was either yesterday or the day before. And in that ruling, um, we'll see that the judge dismissed the case. The judge dismissed the hacking case, you guys, against... Um, Courtney Clenny's parents. So let's take a look at that. All right, a Miami social media model and her parents who were accused of illegally accessing her slain boyfriend's laptop after she allegedly fatally stabbed him are no longer facing charges in the computer case. Courtney Clenny and her parents and Deborah were in a Miami Dade courtroom Thursday. So yeah, that was yesterday where prosecutors announced they would no longer be pursuing felony charges of unauthorized access to a computer or electronic device against all three. So that's what we have here. Let's. Well, really nothing that we're aware of yet. The today's dismissal only applies to the charges of unauthorized access to a computer, charges filed earlier this year by prosecutors who thought the Clennies and their lawyers were up to no good in texts and emails. But Judge Laura Sheeran Cruz found just the opposite, that the lawyers and clients were doing what she called the normal investigation of a criminal case. The prosecution, she said, had blinders on, assuming that lawyers and clients were engaged in criminal activity and seeking the password for a laptop taken from that house. If they were doing something wrong, the state could get around the attorney-client privilege, but they were not, the judge found. So the charges were dropped, giving some relief to Courtney Clenny's parents. They finally, finally truth has prevailed. That's your dad. Um, also, I'd like to say that this has been an ordeal for Deborah and myself for five months, especially for the last two years with Courtney being held unjustly for a crime that she did not commit. Now, hold on a minute. Wait one minute. What is the father exactly saying here? Because we know that Courtney did launch a knife, a kitchen knife, into the chest of her boyfriend, Christian Obamselli. So I'm not sure what exactly the father is thinking about, you know, there being a crime that she did not commit. She absolutely did do that. It's just that she is saying she did it out of 
self-defense. But it's an ordeal. We would gladly go through again a hundred times over if it would provide justice for Courtney. Their daughter, though, still faces a second-degree murder charge in the stabbing death of boyfriend Christian Abumseli in their Miami condo in 2022. Her attorney said if the state attorney does not remove itself from the murder case, he will ask the judge to do it for them, arguing the state attorney's office is tainted by what they read in those emails and texts. Now, Clenny has came, claimed that she stabbed her boyfriend in self-defense, but prosecutors say there's evidence that she was the aggressor in this relationship and therefore is responsible for second-degree murder. In a statement this morning, the state attorney's office tells me prosecutors did not know that Clenny's criminal attorneys were also representing her parents at the time that they obtained these messages, so they say they didn't know they were doing anything wrong, violating that attorney-client privilege, but they respect the judge's findings and decided not to appeal, leaving them no choice but to drop these charges against the parents and Courtney Clenny. Reporting live at the courthouse, Tony Pipitone, NBC6 News. So that's what we have um, is the current state of the Courtney Clenny case. There are now only two cases moving forward um, involving this incident. There's the homicide case, and then there's the civil case. I'm not aware of any other cases that there might be, um, but stay tuned. We still don't have a trial date yet in the homicide case, um, but hopefully we'll see it soon. I did see an interview with her counsel saying that they would be seeking bond for her, um, and saying that, you know, she's been sitting in jail for two years now, almost. So yeah, but should she be out on the streets? I would rather not have her out on these streets of Miami. I mean, I don't, I, there's no way that our worlds would intersect, but you know, if she ha is, accused of these crimes. Obviously, she is um, innocent at the moment, but there's a lot of evidence against her. And, um, you know, just because of this, the charges that she is currently awaiting trial for, um, I don't think that she should be let out on bond. They just need to get their act together and bring this to trial already. I mean, it would be amazing if they could bring this to trial before the end of the year, but I honestly don't see that happening. So we'll stay tuned with that one. The other case that I wanted to um, catch you guys up on is the Karen Reed case, which we know ended in a mistrial. However, we don't really know a mistrial of what, because Judge Bev failed to clarify, fail to specify, um, and fail to receive clarification from the jury of what charges, what one charge or what many charges they were deadlocked on. And that was brought up immediately in these YouTube streets. But for some reason, Judge Bev just didn't have a handle on it. And she was unable to close this out with any kind of authority. We know that we have at least four jurors now who have spoken. Um, two who have spoken directly to defense counsel. And one who has spoken with intermediaries who have uh, those intermediaries have spoken with defense counsel, all saying the same thing, all basically giving a rundown of what was happening in that jury room. And the fact that everybody was in agreement that uh, the Commonwealth didn't prove what they needed to prove for counts one and counts three, and that they were only deadlocked on count two. So um, we know that there is a status hearing for July 22nd. We will all be tuned in on July 22nd for that status hearing. These most definitely will be raised, these affidavits, 
along with the motion to dismiss, will most, most definitely be raised in that status hearing. And we'll all be waiting with bated breath because, and this is important, because if the jury has determined that the defendant is not guilty of certain charges, then there's no way that the Commonwealth should retry that same defendant for those same charges. That's the definition of double jeopardy. And that goes against double jeopardy protect protections. So we really need to get down to the bottom of this. We need, need to find out what exactly is going on. And that may come about through um, in-camera interviews with the jurors. I don't know if just one juror would be enough stating that, um, what the split was with the charges in the uh, jury deliberations. But there's four. There are four jurors now who have spoken out publicly. Um, and they're all saying consistent statements as far as uh, the defendant's guilt or not guilt <laughs> in certain of these charges. So we need to get down to the bottom of this. And I just can't imagine being a defendant and just being in limbo like this for so long. So until the next drop, peace. Have a good weekend, y'all.